Okay, well, welcome everybody to East Dundee's regular meeting of the Village Board of Trustees and the Village President, dated Monday, April 15, 2024. I have 602. Proctor, you take the roll. Trustee Saviano. Here. Trustee Triber is absent. Trustee Kunze. Present. Trustee Mahoney. Here. Trustee Britton. Here. Trustee Sauter. Here. And President Lynham. Here. And if you rise with me for the pledge. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, that's going to take us. Do we want to go? Uh, did somebody want to make a motion? Yeah. Public, public comment first. Yeah, we do. Okay, uh, we'll go through public comment first then. Uh, do we have anybody who wants to present to the board? Yes, we have two. The uh, first one is Nancy Stein. Hi, I'm Nancy Stein. Um, I live on South Van Buren Street and have for just short of 39 and a half years, so I've seen many changes happen there. Um, I like the overall plan for the Riverwalk development and everything. I do have one big question um, regarding the Hager property. When is it going to be torn down? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, that's a big one. And the reason I ask is I noticed about a month or so ago the brick facade of the yeah. north wall fell down. I'm like, okay, it's yeah. trying. Yeah. Um, and then about a week ago I saw like five individuals wandering around scoping the place. So it's just like the sooner it gets gone, maybe there won't be so much vandalism and such like that there. So major concern on my part. And I was looking at the master plan and it was, didn't really say when. And I'm like, would that be under phase one? So that would be maybe two years down the line? Possibly. I think what we're waiting for is it just to fall down under its own weight. That way we can save on <laughs> demo costs. <laughs> I, I had a, I, would, no, that's, I was thinking yeah, that. No, seriously, yeah. though, we it, it's going to be a long-term proposition. The village is going to acquire the property. In fact, we pretty much already have. Um, and then it's going to be, it's so much land and, and so much possibility, really, that it, it's going to be a, a big discussion. So it isn't going to be anything that's going to happen over task. there. Yeah. And so... It, it, Trust me, the, the, the residents will be made aware of, of what the, the possibilities are and what the likelihood of it is. Yeah. Okay. We'll be able to weigh in and other <coughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's not looking any better day by day. I know, I know. <laughs> We're I'll say it. Yeah. Um, and then I was reading the master plan, and on the maps on that, um, I was like, wait a minute. <coughs> They have South Van Buren marked as North Van Buren. Oh, is that right? They do. And I'm like, that. no, no, yeah. no, 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 that's not right. <laughs> that's a pinky of thing. But um, I was reading that about the ending River Street at Maiden Lane, and then, you know, it would be rerouted. That concerns me mm -hmm. as far as the traffic that's going to be on that. I call that my block of Van Buren because yeah. I'm on the 200 block because there's five kids that currently, you know, families with kids there. There's another that's going to be born this summer. So I'm just concerned as to how that's going to affect the traffic. And I know there's going to be a survey done the third quarter of this year. Yeah, but it has to be a traffic. It's just, it's a concern that I wanted to throw out there yeah. for myself and my neighbors. Well, I appreciate mm -hmm. it. I appreciate it. Again, as I say, you know, before anything really, before any shovel or anything goes into the ground, the, we're, we're going to have a, a big effort to communicate with the residents exactly what the plan is and what we've been doing to this point is just you know in, info gathering if you will uh just what could we do what can be done you know what can't we do that sort of thing and that's pretty much where we're at so we've had a, a number of options that have been presented to us but nothing is etched in stone so. okay cool thank you sure thank you, thank you. great the last one is gary mueller gary oh, yes um, I see is on the agenda tonight about this river front uh, project or something. I'm looking at something look for looking for approval on it yet. I just wanted to come here saying 
how this is my words how wrong I think it is. I you must have plans of like parking like the, like the biggest issue in this town. I don't see it. It's just gonna be people don't know who goes to parks. They're just families for the most part. Yeah. Family of six with four kids. You know, you're gonna take parking from as it comes in, you know, feed towards town. Mm -hmm. And they'll be down every six, eight hours with their picket basket doing whatever. And, you know, you're happy about that, but to give it the look of like, we don't know what's going on, correct, with Hager Pottery yet? I mean, is that still at all like planning of like park? Because our concern, I mean, I wanted to get the print, I came to your office to get prints. I'm a caveman to a phone. <laughs> I asked if I could get the thing, and she goes, oh, it's 475 pages or yeah, something. I go, well, I wouldn't want to do that. I'll pay for it. Sure. And then, you know, your time is up to do it. I mean, she goes, no, you have to look it up, but that's not me. I, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a caveman. Right, no, I get it. But, you know, I, I don't <laughs> see, um, I, have to, I have to see it, because what your idea was, if there's going to be fencing and stuff, because that, the park that's there now keeps your kids like a little, little crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, they can actually sit, relax, and do it. Now you get it open to water, where we have even issues as of just as of yesterday with people, like almost drowning in the water and stuff, and, and that, just up here. And I don't. I mean, I don't. Is it going to be caged in mm -hmm. the same way in the park area? Because if you're going to open it to water, you're going to have some serious problems. Yeah. With you know, you 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 know, not a, a park. You know, you you people are walking about a canoe and kayak area. Mm -hmm. Why not? Why not go to a park? I mean, that's, and you might rightfully want that. But the things of you know, when I was hearing before the pickleball courts and and doing that stuff, the people have been around pickleball courts. It's annoying, and it's right there in the water. Yeah. And I'll tell you something. If we hear with music or with a solo person where we're at, we get calls from not even right across the river, two, three blocks in, mm -hmm. I can't imagine just, you know, just the noise. But the biggest thing is this goes right back to the, to the parking. I can't believe that the, the village, the downtown people are on board with this. They think they're going to go down there and dine and stuff. And I said, that family of six isn't going down to dine at DC Cobbs and have six burgers and walk out a $200 plus uh, tab, they're not going to do it. You think you're going to get business from that? You're going you're gonna to lose business because you're going to have, you're going to lose people that are be parking in the areas that are, that you guys so desperately need downtown and it would just start taking away from, from that. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm a business down here and my concern is just like, you know, the truck pattern, is it is it still the truck route? Is that still? Well, I know it's not one way anymore. I heard that was changed. Right. Actually, we, that's one of the things that we've been struggling with, and so really, what we have, been, that what has been presented to us, have, have been a number of options. And as I mentioned to the the uh, uh, lady, uh, nothing's etched in stone. A lot of it is. I mean, we're still we got a lot of flexibility, Gary, with what we can do, um, but. You know, we've got the north end of the river, we got the south end, and so with regard to the Hager Pottery, that whole region there, a portion of it can be turned into a park, a riverfront park. Um, on the north end, we've had a number of complaints, two, two real big issues. One, the truck traffic, and they, the truckers will, for whatever reason, not follow the route that's been designated. That's a pain in the butt for the people along that route. Second thing has been the speed. And so, and the chief could attest to this, we've had a number of complaints for a long time now. The idea of cordoning off Triangle Park, or Barrows Park, whatever, um, to force traffic to go around it would be one way to control the speed. Uh, the same way with the trucking routes, because you, if you're in a big rig, you're gonna have a bear of a time getting around that park. You're not gonna wanna do it. In addition to which, I think it would help us police that area a little bit easier. Now your concerns about the idea of the park being cordoned off and then all the way to the water line is, is legitimate. And, and there are a couple of different, different routes of going around the park. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be safe for people 
bringing their semis through that area? Well, that's just it. We don't want them to go that route. I mean, I've seen it a number of times where a big rig will go all the way down to 72 on Water Street and make a right, because they can't go left, but a right in to go west, which is no bargain either because they're taking up a lot of the eastbound traffic, or at least slowing things down. It's not safe no matter what, you know, which way you measure it. Uh, I think that if we make it more difficult for a rig like that to go from essentially Washington Street all the way down to 72, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor and of having that discussion. That, my, my concerns are just that the traffic, I mean, I'm looking how it goes from just as, you know, Carpentersville to here, how many ways there are to get from that town to here. Mm -hmm. People won't go do that, you know, to to come to the area. They're using this as like a pass route. Like I was saying, I think people get off of it to kind of just take in the river, you know, to try and calm down their day. <clears throat> That's what I think. Yeah. But it's just, you know, they won't. They'll start going more on the side streets then, making it, you know, because they can get faster. Maybe there's a truck. They'll start speeding down the little side streets to come up and cut up where they can. Right. It, it's just, a, I just think it's a, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm looking at here seeing like an approval for this. I'm, I got to hang around to hear the whole thing, but. No, I, um, I understand that. I, I, I guess that my concerns are just like, I don't see how it benefits the town, you well, know, because like the band thing, what I've heard, it's still where the basketball courts nestling against the houses. I'm thinking like, mm. I have one person outside and yeah, stuff. I mean, you know, and I mean, a lot of that is just possibilities, what could be done, that sort of thing, but none of it, there's been no I decisions. Know. I mean, I, it's too early, and I wish I could get everything and know everything. I'm, I'm blind, because I don't, yeah. I'm not in that new world, and probably won't ever get there, I don't want to. Well, and you know what, bad thing. If, if, you know, you've got my number, and you give me a call, we can sit down and talk about the I'm sorry, you guys, I don't mean to be taking oh, no, home. No, 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 you're fine. Minutes. It's, it's just, problem. It's you're just, good. It, there doesn't seem like it's a, uh, it, you know, everybody wants a, a park for their kids, and you know, especially locals. Who wouldn't? Mm -hmm. But we have, you know, Fireman's Park out there. If there would have been any kind of use of it, but do I see anybody ever using that? Well, like, yeah, and that that's another. It, it's no, point. yeah, that's a so it's just that. like you know, now you're building a park for what to make it, you know, intriguing for some, but there's not going to be money spent. I mean, you're thinking. The outsiders will be coming in, not town people. Mm -hmm. Town people can walk over there. I, I get that. It'll be a real nice, nice little deal. But for the businesses and stuff, I mean, thank God I'm not downtown because I would be really uh, <laughs> screaming about this because they're going to back. They're going to backfill like anywhere else. They're busy in town. How far do they go parking to get to downtown Dundee now? Right. And Friday and Saturday nights, you know how horrible it is. It is. We're working on that too. In the main, in the main way, are they going Van Buren? Or is it River Street? Well, You're you looking. Mean, I mean, yeah. nothing makes sense. If it's River Street, that's that's suicidal because it takes me sometimes five minutes to make a left on Barron Tenant at rush right. hour. Right. A like truck that. will take you 15, 20 minutes, and then wherever that line of cars be, locked, blocked, people trying to get out can't get out. Yeah. It's going to be a fighting. Nightmare. No. If, it, if it has to be Van Buren, if you're doing that route, you can't go the other side. Right? Yeah, and there there would be a, a significant amount of study and traffic specifically that before any decisions are made. Okay, yeah, so. like I just said I'm sorry it took more than no, no, no. five Keep minutes, but I just uh, you're fine. I, I you're fine. You're fine. Okay, you're fine. Great. Mr. President, I, I did it. Uh, can, uh, you can, can you uh, present it to the board, if you will? Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Matt Oakland. I live on 2 Johnson Street. And uh, I just wanted to kind of go over uh, with this new proposal with the riverfront. We're excited in our house to see, you know, all the investment going in our community. We had the concern about some of the verbiage that was in the plan. And I just want to say thanks to the board for removing that verbiage because we like living in our house. And uh, we didn't want to <laughs> see it potentially being redeveloped. So. Um, I wanted to just kind of come out and say in person how appreciative we are. Um, I know we voice our concerns. We had our concerns with Hager Pottery when the wall came down. Once again, we appreciate you guys jumping on it and uh, making it safer there because uh, I am one of the people with the little kids and I know sometimes they wander. So uh, we want it to be as safe as possible. Once again, I appreciate everything you guys do. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Anybody else who would like to discuss anything agenda, non-agenda non, non item? No? Seeing none. Great. Okay, you know, we have got a presentation for uh, Officer Dan Dudas, 20 years of service recognition. We're going to move that one up to before the consent agenda. So can we have a motion to do that? Sure. I will move to uh, move uh, item 6A to the next line on the agenda. I'll second. All right. Front. Trustee Saviano? Yes. Trustee Kunze? Yes. Trustee Maloney? Yes. Trustee Britton? Yes. Trustee Sauter? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Chief, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. So, so Dan has reached the elusive milestone of 20 years of service and having been 50 years old. So for those of you who aren't, who aren't uh, sorry, I'm not. So, so for those of you who, are, uh, who aren't familiar, when you reach that age milestone and that years of service and public service, you qualify for your pension. Pension, and we jokingly like to say, we're one bad day away. So Dan is officially one bad day away. But in all seriousness, no, Dan, 20 years in any profession is tough. I think 20 years as a police officer is especially stuff. I think that also makes this extra special to East Dundee is Dan is also an East Dundee resident. So thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. and downs, trials, tribulations, um, but for the most part, one of the best things about working for the village is living in it. Um, I get to enjoy my uh, friends and, you know, help them through things that they wouldn't normally, uh, like if I have to deal with them at work, you know, I, I kind of give them a little bit different way of looking at things, so kind of have a little bit of an upper hand on that. Um, this has been the best 20 years of my life, however, in my life, is uh, Dana for any of you who don't know her in my family. Um, she uh, has served 20 years uh, with me working for the village. <laughs> 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 I would like to recognize her as well. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Can't beat the community. Yeah, right. <laughs> Best commuter out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to continue on then with the consent agenda. If we could have a motion for that. Um, I'll move to approve the consent agenda items A through H. Uh, someone wants to approve an item for the consent agenda? No. Second. Second. Okay. Trustee Saviano? Yes. Trustee Kunzi? Yes. Trustee Mahoney? Yes. Trustee Britton? Yes. And Trustee Sauter? Yes. Okay, that'll take us to other agenda items B on section six, if we could have a motion. I will make a motion to approve the findings of fact regarding a variation from section 156.04C1B regarding the maximum square feet allowed for a business establishment identification wall sign located at 535 Dundee Avenue, portion of pen 03262227. 007 located in the B3 General Service Business District. Second. Second. Okay. Is there any questions or comments, discussion, anything anybody would like to make? No, um, good with them. I appreciate that they um, went forth and, and made the change of the Elgin Wall in mm -hmm. East Dundee to help with that. Um, yeah. That petitioner, um, oh, is that, or is that the next one? Maybe I'm jumping yeah. ahead. I mean, it's all connected. We probably could have done them both. But yeah. Okay. No other comments? No other comments. Good. 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 Trustee Saviano? Yes. Trustee Kunze? Yes. Trustee Mahoney? Yes. Trustee Bridgen? Yes. Trustee Sauter? Yes. 
Okay, that'll take us to item C, if we could have a motion. I will move to approve an ordinance granting a variation from section 156.04 C1B <coughs> regarding the maximum square feet allowed for a business establishment identification wall sign located at 535 Dundee Avenue, portion of pin 03262270007, located in the B3 General Service Business District. Second. Questions, comments? Looks like they did what we asked. Mm hmm. Franco. Trustee Saviano. Yes. Trustee Kunze. Yes. Trustee Mahoney. Yes. Trustee Britton. Yes. And Trustee Sonner. Yes. Okay, that'll take us to item D. If we could have a motion. I will move to approve an ordinance extending the term of a special use permit for outside vehicle and equipment parking and storage on the south portion of the property of the future Heinz Road extension located at 590 Healy Road in the M1 Manufacturing District. Second. I have a quick comment to make on this one. Please. So the, the fire district recently adopted some new regulations and they have requested that we amend this item to include a condition on the special use that the business complies with those new regulations. So if there is a desire to do that, if somebody can make a motion to amend. If you would like further information about what these new regulations are, um, there's a representative from the fire district here that can explain. Yeah, would you uh, care to sure. if we're gonna vote on that, I would love to hear what <laughs> <laughs> And I wanna make sure or the business which, is aware. Which of those would affect this particular <coughs> instance of a special use? Uh, fire access road, specifically the weight the road or the lane can hold uh, for apparatus, the grade, uh, identification to help in response in emergencies, um, identifying the lot and or slots. Um, we're trying to get ahead of the game with the truck parking as far as identification is concerned. Um, and I've been trying with this property to get some of those uh, ahead of the game and it hasn't been too successful. Yeah, so well you understand that this will only affect a very small portion of the For now, I guess. Yeah. But my ordinance will help right. assist in the future for future development of okay. anything else. So. Have you have run into a snag with the operator there? This is a lamp. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. We've requested a few site plans and access gates have changed and locks located, and we haven't received any updates that they're asking. So I've reached out a few times. Okay. Um, the weight of the road specifically, are we talking about Heinz? Or are we talking about Commonwealth or which one? Their property specific. Their property. access to their road, to their, okay. to their truck parking lot, has to hold the weight of the fire apparatus 75,000 pounds. And it currently does. not How are they able to park a fully laden truck, which would roughly be 80,000? It would just be the, it would just be the type of gravel or how compacted it is. Okay. There's some areas that are so currently excavated that you couldn't try to pick a truck over it. Okay. They're just kind of parking them in. Now, as far as a parking spot's concerned, that's not per the ordinance. It's access to those spots that I'm more concerned about. So okay. Okay. that's more on their shoulders as <laughs> parking something on. So is it more the maintenance that they're not doing the crushed limestone and, and the proper bed? In yeah, the, it's more just, yeah, roads? yeah, especially like in the winter time, for example, you know, mm -hmm. they're not plowed. There's divots where bottoming out our engines out there. Mm -hmm. um, not just that lot, but this is the only one in question. So mm -hmm. we're damaging our vehicles. We can't find trucks during emergencies. We've had this discussion at board meetings in the past. So uh, they need to start late blowing. So we wrote in our ordinance effective March. So. Okay, so I have a couple questions. One, are you seeing the same problems anywhere else out there? Because there are other parcels that are truck <coughs> parking that- In my district, yes. You are. In your village, um, yes, but we're working with them. Okay. And you're not seeing the same sort of snags? We like have, the, but they're working with us. But they're working with you. Yeah. Okay. Then the other question that I have would be for council. If we were to go ahead and approve this as it's written now, <coughs> um, would it effectively allow that operator to thumb their nose at the fire department as far as regulation for one more year? Uh, or can we table this until we get assurance from them that they're going to bring up these problems? Well, so it would, um, 
every property has to, whether or not they have a zoning relief granted to it, has to comply with um, the local, state, federal, you know, regulations, what have you, which <coughs> I, um, assuming, you know, not having read this ordinance, but I, I'm assuming based on your representations that it was duly passed and applies to this property, and they would have to comply with it. What it, would it, if you condition it on their zoning relief, then it would give you, it would mean that you could revoke or, um, you know, do something with their, uh, with this ordinance and their special use permit. Okay. Um, for violating this ordinance. If they violate it now, the fire district or the village whoever had authority could um, okay. issue citations, but it wouldn't be linked to their zoning. So if the snags that currently exist continue, we can step in and say, you know, all bets are off, fix the problem before you go in further. It's why we often put type, those types of conditions, and kind of just a catch-all is in, a lot of, of our zoning ordinance and special use just has a catch-all that the applicant must comply with all state local regulations um, and if it's specific like in this case we could say you know fire safety regulations because then it, it more clearly ties it to the zoning some people ask why we would do that because obviously everyone has to comply with the, the laws regardless of whether or not you have a special use permit but it just okay. ties it to your zoning more clearly okay. so, so we can we just amend to include if you if the board would like to add this as a condition you could someone would have could make a motion to amend, amend the, the uh, motion to condition the uh, special ordinance grant and special use permit on um, you know however you want to word it complying with all state and local regulations including those relating to fire safety or something like that okay because mm -hmm. yeah it's not specifically I don't see it specifically called out in yeah, it, it is. It's, this yeah. It is not. I, I looked at that because sometimes we do include okay. a catch-all in this one. I think because okay. it's an extension, it probably wasn't in the original, so we didn't Fair. include it um, okay. specifically in this. So would we like to? I will amend my motion to include mm -hmm. the. It would be a, a motion a to a amend motion. the motion, and then we second and then vote. I need to. Them. I need to make a motion to amend my motion. <laughs> To include language regarding the um, compliance with local fire district ordinances. Okay. Second. Front row or no discussion? Anybody? Right. Trustee Saviano? Yes. Trustee Kunze? Yes. Trustee Mahoney? Yes. Trustee Britton? Yes. Trustee Sauter? Yes. Okay, and so thank you. And I'm sorry, that was to amend the motion. Now right. we need a motion to pass it. Right. Or no, now we just need to take. We have another motion. Motion. So we just need to Thanks vote to pass it. Motion. Yeah, okay. Apologize. Okay. Gets confusing for everyone. <laughs> so we've amended the motion. Now can we have a, a motion to? We don't that motion's on the table. It's already on the table, the table as amended. Right. So mm -hmm. Franco. Okay. Well, do we have any more questions on well, this? Are there anything? Does anybody have? Anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. Trustee Saviano. Yes. Trustee Kunze. Yes. Trustee Mahoney. Yes. Trustee Britton. Yes. Trustee Sonner. Yes. Great. Thank, Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, that'll take us to item E. If we could have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve a resolution adopting the East and the Riverfront Master Plan. Second. Questions? I did want to just make a comment, especially since we heard from folks during um, public comment today um, and didn't really have the opportunity to respond until now. Um, there are some FAQs available on the website, and I know Gary, Mr. Caveman, um, just to let you know, one of the things that we talked about, and Erica, I'm going to ask you to correct me when I say this incorrectly. The plan itself is a very long and extensive plan that's gonna go over the course of decades, right? It can go forever and ever. Um, what we are putting forward is a lot of ideas. Each one of those separate projects is gonna still come before the board. We're not gonna tell a board 20 years from now that they absolutely have to put pickleball on the Hager property. These are ideas, these are concepts and things that we may put forward, but each individual thing as it comes up, each individual project is gonna come back before the board for discussion for Scrutiny. absolute planning mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. so this is an overarching long-term plan on how to fix up the riverfront things like that park and putting a fence around it and stuff like that will be discussed 
We'll definitely make a note of it because I agree that's kind of nice about that park when when I have my niece to be able to let her run around and not be worried about the traffic. So, you know, there's a lot of that kind of those details that will be able to be worked out individually as each part of the project goes forward. Yeah. Further, each each portion of the project might be broken down into several smaller projects. Um, and and all of those individual things will need to be approved by budget. Right. So <laughs> trust me, um, we will make sure that the, uh, the initial socialization of where these plans are, when they're gonna be coming before the board, the, the stakeholders, the business stakeholders, the residents will all be well aware of that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was um, there, um, there are some residents and businesses that are in these plans at this point in time. And when I look at the calendar, that's not for t until 2030, when we would even begin to start looking at that. Um, I, I, I will say that for myself, and I know for some other people on the board, it's not our intention to, to take the property no. or the businesses or the, the residents that have made their home here and to take that specific property to make a park or no. make, make another there. And it's, it's on the north end river and it's also on the south end of the river that um, there's some very lucrative businesses yeah. there that we have no intention. Um, so it's all going to end up having a whole new separate plan for each section um, on there. Um, but <clears throat> Gary, I can, um, I can print this out for you and drop it by the bar. I'm going to be out of town this week, but if you haven't seen it, I'll get it to you. Okay. I appreciate that. I mean, I'll pay for it. I mean, you, you don't need to pay for it. I might just use it because I have a different fight going because yeah, it's not an interest because it's a starter, you know. Yeah. Because it's just like I just do want to have all of my media supporters. Like, and I and I will. Most parts, <laughs> wait. I mean, it's just like, but like you said, I just said yeah. something you guys are yeah. moving on. It's a slow process. I probably won't be around here, but. The way I do business is I look for taking care of my neighbors, you know. Mm -hmm. When I bought that bar, I was offered to have me that, that house ripped that house out, which is totally, I had a different plan than now with the, the pipes person doing the thing and doing I'm bad with the insurance company with that right now. But uh, I'm a company about putting a parking lot, but they want me to put a, a beer garden and I'm going like, I got a neighborhood and I kind of take care of the people around me. And that's the only good thing was going on down the street. I will be literally coming up with a count like I did when he built that bar on the drive-by tractor. In 1994, there were 4,500 cars that went by there in an hour and a half in the morning. And I'll be out there at the same time. Today, probably won't even be anywhere near 50% of that. And with this, it will go down well, more than 50 percent. That no one would want that. Well, that will start getting away from that road. But maybe that's some of your plan. Do you think it's, it's better for a community? Um, I just thought it was all started when I started clearing my stuff on the river. And you guys started doing some phone calls from people like, why am I getting special treatment? It's just like the river's like it, it's a way to relax and look at the river. Well, actually, Gary, too, I mean, the point you just make is another reason why we're doing this. And, and again, as Kathleen mentioned, we're just being proactive to what can be done down the road. But with the removal of the Carpentersville Dam, there will be free access from North and Algonquin all the way to what, South Elgin, I think, is the next dam. Mm -hmm. 
that allows for a big chunk of the river to be used for recreational purposes and we've never done anything in East Dundee to exploit that possibilities. This is just ideas of what can be done, the potential of it has, and so it's really just kind of putting, not necessarily a stake in the ground, but it's just, um, you know, considering the what ifs, what, we, what can be done, what can't be done, that sort of thing, so. I said, look at it as, sorry, no, I look ahead. at it as like our commitment that we're gonna make a change, and we don't know what that is yet. It's, it's a design company that came forward with <coughs> ideas, but I'm, by doing this, I'm saying I'm committed that I want it to be better. And I don't know what it's gonna look like yet. Because phase one could have a bunch of projects and we have to approve them all and all that. So <laughs> we don't know yet, but this is just a commitment that we're gonna do something new. And Gary, uh, honestly, uh, um, and Mrs. Stein, um, honestly, the um, with, with the riverfront or the North River Street portion, you have the most Honestly, your business has the most to gain from amenitizing and improving the lake, the riverfront. I mean, I go, I go, I go to, to your place to sit out on that patio and overlook the the river in the summertime. That's a huge draw for me, and by by having that all improved, um, is is going to really benefit. Um, is going to really benefit you and the customers that come to your place. Also, I, I completely disagree. I think you're a destination. I don't think, you know, is that there is drive-by traffic, but people know you now, and you are definitely a destination um, that people search out um, and they and they go to and and um, and they come to go see you and eat your awesome um, chicken fingers. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> Corned beef, that's the yeah. one I was looking for. And it's going to be years down the road, I'm sure. So. Yeah, and I'll add that um, eating on the patio at your place, like you are there for, like you said, the river, the peace, the tranquility, uh, that you're not really wanting to see semis go by and have a bunch of exhaust uh, at your table. Um, so trying to make it so that it's a little bit slow down and more pedestrian friendly. Um, part of the goal is to make that riverfront experience nicer for pedestrians and you're right in the middle of both sides of this development where millions of dollars are being invested on the river in Carpentersville and below you to get people to use that trail. Uh, it does seem like that's going to definitely benefit Rosie's and bring a lot more people to you that, and the semis aren't going to stop and pull over for a burger. Uh, but all of these pedestrians will want somewhere to get a drink and something to eat. So, anything else? Ready to call the question? Hmm? Okay. Trustee Saviano? Yes. Trustee Kunzi? Yes. Trustee Mahoney? Yes. Trustee Britton? Yes. And Trustee Sauter? Yes. Okay. I appreciate everybody's input on that. This will take us to item F which is a direction on uh, two proposed design options for the commercial space in the parking garage to be constructed at 110 North River Street in downtown East Dundee. Uh, Eric, would you want to run us through what those two options are? Sure. So six weeks ago, the board debated the possibility of adding retail storefront space to the parking garage. And so the consultant has narrowed down some options which were presented in the packet tonight, which present a pretty nice facade for what is going to be about 6,000 square feet of retail. And so tonight we're looking for direction on if there is a consensus on one of those two designs. If there is, then the consultant will move forward with refining the numbers for the project and will bring the construction contract back to the board in the first meeting in May. Um, and then from there, if that's approved, there will be a shovel in the ground in July. So, questions, discussion. You guys have had an opportunity to look at the, the options that were available at <coughs> different elevations. Andy, what are your thoughts? Uh, so the only difference is the colors, correct? Essentially. Um, I, when I saw the um, 
the first option that was all one color brick, I was kind of wanting to see what would it look like if they were just slightly different because that's how some of the downtown ones are. But mm -hmm. um, after seeing it, I do kind of like the first one better to feel a little bit unified. I think there's enough variation with each storefront with the different setbacks and all of those details. I feel like I like the first one uh, the most and the second, like the painted brick, um, not quite as much as the first, but both of them happy with how these are looking and love that you're seeing an extension of our downtown's retail uh, in a matching historic facade that looks like the other buildings and you're not seeing a parking lot. Um, I, so yeah, the first one is where I'm at. The art team me loves the colorful one, but mm -hmm. I wonder about longevity of the different colors. And so with that being said, I, I really do like them both. Um, I don't, yeah, painted brick, I don't know if it's gonna end up, yeah. or is it painted, or is it just no, a dark brick? It's okay. just, yeah. That's just the natural brick okay. color. Okay. So it's it's um, integrated, it's not right. surface right. 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 of the colors. Hmm. Yeah, that would be a maintenance nightmare. So. so one thing that I wish the consultant would have done was like look down the block, mm -hmm. um, because the, the bricks built, or the, is the lab building, is substantially similar to the first one so it in some ways that's a good thing in some ways if you look at it a different way it's like just depends on personal preference whether you think breaking up that long similarity is good or if it adds to the overall experience that it's similar so I know when we were working on these designs Scott was a big proponent of the this having everything the same um, but you know the consultant came up with this other design I think it's also creative so I think you just have to think about what. I like them both, honestly. Like I'm not yeah. upset with either of them. So I, if, if the consensus is the other one, that all the other ones are fine with that. I actually do feel like I think the first one is probably the way to go. But I would just say on the second one, if we do do the multicolor, I would say we should do more traditional colored bricks than white and black. Like you know, if you look at the 311 building, they have different colors, but they're mm -hmm. they look like brick colors rather than white and black. Yeah. All I would say is that, you know, maybe if we do do multicolor, I could see the I could see the, the benefit of that, but the white and the black, I guess, is what turns me off specifically because that just doesn't seem to fit the historic value mm -hmm. of the downtown. Gotcha. In my opinion. I'd buy that. Too. <laughs> and I'll just add the reason that they put the black in was because they wanted to integrate some black because of the West or the north facade has some black in it, um, but certainly we could try a different variation of colors. Yeah. Well, I mean, it does have black because the whole face shows all black, right? Yeah, that, 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 so right. it does tie that in, I think. It does, it does. I, I actually thought too the maybe an effort to try and tie one of the units to the um, Main Street Dental and River Street Tavern portion. Mm -hmm. So you, if we use the same brick there, we'll probably <coughs> integrate it better. I mean, because what we're looking at here is, while it looks really nice, we've got four different <coughs> materials being used in that space, and then we've got the, the existing structure to the south of it. If there was a, somehow an effort to be able to tie them in, I think it might uh, help us out a bit. Um, Maybe even going with with two different styles, but again, um, you know, I I worry about as Erica had mentioned uh, the idea that we have so much of what's regarded as the Hager brick look already from mm -hmm. Kalendos all the way north to Barrington is that then we've got the LA Barrington building at 220 mm -hmm. River and then we've got um, uh, well this <laughs> yeah you know, it might all be and I mean they're too much I don't yeah. know. I understand what you're saying about there being too much, but it's also like that is the Hager brick. It's there's historical value and just mm -hmm. the fact that like that is the Hager brick and that one needs to be where Hager was, making this brick. So I mean there's some reason I think to to be consistent with that, but I'm not saying that there has to be. I mean, that's just my thought. Right. Kathleen, what are your thoughts? Well um One of my biggest goals and concerns with the design, at least along River Street, is that it didn't look like a monolith. 
of of and I think they've done a really great job with adding the windows and the storefronts, which is easy to add. Um, I personally like the idea of breaking up the color in the sections like they have, but I agree 100% the black and the white are too different, and I would rather go with different shades, even if they repeated the two on the left, the two lighter yeah, colors nice. on the left, um, or you know, found another one so that it looked like more like four smaller buildings um, and wouldn't be such a big monolith. I love the accent of the black at the top, kind of tying everything together, and the accent of the black lights and the awnings, and I think that it will like really tie in because I believe River Street has already got black awnings. We do. Um, so there's there's some nice things that I think they picked up on that will help tie it together, and then also um, the medical building. Um, but yeah, if we could do something where we're staying more in what the heck coloring, coloration and variation in colorations look like, that would be my preference. Sarah? I am trying to pull up a Google map of what River Street, like to get that view down it, and it's yeah. sending me to a someplace in Wisconsin, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> um, so I. So much of what I love about our downtown is the charm of all of the different buildings and the different sizes and how everything looks a little bit different. And it's my only real concern with kind of going with the same front on all of them. Um, mm -hmm. Having the Hager brick tie to Rivers, like be in a different location closer to River Street Tavern, so it ties it together. And, and I do agree, if we do the various colors, I prefer it be natural color and not, you know, natural na natural looking brick at least. Um, but I guess, I, you know, I don't know. Let's do rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same, kind of the same thing. I would switch to natural brick shades. Uh, I think it was the black and the white feeling like yeah. it looked mm -hmm. kind of like painted brick, which yeah. In, yeah, I don't want painted bricks. No. I don't yeah, think like painted bricks. Maybe brick two is, shades that yeah. kind of alter. Because looking at the, I think it's just uh, really like the downtown does oh, have a lot of shades yeah. of bricks, yeah. and it gives the appearance of age because they probably used all the same bricks but then changed it over time. So you're kind of mirroring that uh, elapsed time <clears throat> on something you're making at once. Right. So I like that idea to mask it. Yeah. Nothing will be painted. <laughs> yeah. No will, painting. Yeah. No painting the brick. bricks. Yeah, even if it's yeah, white or black brick, seems like they still would kind of stand out from yeah. the others. Yeah, I think the no matter farmhouse. The rendering <laughs> kind of tried to get an antique look to mm -hmm. the white portion, but it's not painted. So, so what do we need in or tonight in order to move this forward then so we, to give them what? Because we're not changing anything maybe. except the color of the brick, um, we can move forward with the concept of trying out a couple other options. I would like to have the consultant bring in samples mm -hmm. so yeah. that we could you know, touch it and feel it before we commit. So we'll just go forward with having them select a, s a couple samples that are the same price so that we can move forward on the contract. And then we can still move forward and then still have options. Mm -hmm. Good enough, good enough. Okay. Okay. Any further questions, discussion? No? Uh, one comment. Uh, okay. Uh, they did a great job. Like it does look way better than the previous rounds, and um, uh, yeah, thank you for all the work that went into this. Yes. Uh, whoever did all the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, than a lot currently, right? Yeah, it's a lot better than an empty lot. I had yes. one other um, comment about you know <coughs> that they were putting the black on the brick on the front on that one because it's also on the side. You know, if they if they feel like you know. The coloration on the side um, needs to change so that it fits in better and is go for it. Okay, and it's good. To, you know, cost would be my question on that. Mm -hmm. If it, if we can be done, you know, less expensive, uh, then yeah, absolutely. But we have to find out what that material runs. So uh, those are the questions we'll ask them. Great. Okay, then that'll take us to item G. If we could have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve a resolution adopting the electronic attendance at village meetings policy. I'll second. Second. Okay. 
question. Now, when we talk about village meetings, not, this isn't specific to village board meetings. This is planning and zoning. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. I mean, we already have procedure in place for electronic uh, participation. So. Um, I believe this just extends that to PCHC. <laughs> it does. The only other change is just um, this year in January, uh, the state mm -hmm. uh, added an additional exception for unexpected child care obligations of when mm -hmm. um, remote, when you have a quorum present, but someone could participate remotely. So this also includes the additional um, uh, unexpected child care obligations amongst the other uh, reasons that a member of the board or any other subsidiary commission could participate remotely if a quorum is present in person. Does our uh, motion have to, or the agenda item, is that need to be amended? Oh, no, it includes it. it and I was just yeah. saying that that's the only other really okay. change from any past policy of the, for the Board of Trustees, and it also extends it. Okay. Can I ask a quick question, Bronco? Um, what is the difference between this and the next? The one is the policy and for the, the board. The ordinance? Yes. Sorry. So the Thank policy you. basically describes what Caitlin just said, and it permits all subsidiary bodies of the board to participate remotely. The so ordinance so amends the existing one that the village board has only been using to now open it up to the other bodies. Thank you. So as I read through it, I, I just you know kind of got a sense that the requirement that written communication be forwarded on to request this accommodation it might be a bit cumbersome. And so text will suffice, correct? It, it, there is language on there that any, basically almost, uh, if you can't do that, if you could let us know, it's fine. Good enough, as long as the, the quick text is gonna work, then yeah. good. But I mean, we cannot participate remotely unless we're traveling for business specifically. Mm -hmm. We cannot do it just because we feel like oh, we're right. right. no. on vacation or anything yeah. like that. So are we going to apply that same standard to Yes, absolutely. It's the requirements and we only can allow this as the it's a, a exception from the Open Meetings Act, which is a state statute. So we're really just adopting what the state already uh, the, the state allows as okay. the exceptions to the physical presence um, in the person's in okay. person at the meeting. So you have to have a quorum here, and then and this would apply to the board, to the plan and zoning, to any um, any commission of the village. And then there's four reasons that you could participate if there's quorum present that you could participate remotely if you have um, an illness a business trip or a business for the public body that's taking you away, a family or other emergency or unexpected child care obligations. If you um, are on a vacation, that doesn't allow you to participate remotely. So or other, there's <coughs> many other reasons, but so that's I mean, do we really example. feel like this is even gonna help us get quorum? Because you have to have quorum in order to even enact this then, right? The, right, quorum cannot be established with somebody remote, correct? No, you can't. The only um, way that you can pr have fully remote meetings is if there's like a natural emer emergency like COVID and that's right. not in play at the moment. So, so Scott, there were a handful of things that um, were discussed during that plan and zoning meeting. And I think the adoption of all of them is just to get more participation, not necessarily to help hit quorum. Mm -hmm. but really just to allow more people to participate more often um, and get, you know, that that's kind of part of it. Because yeah. there's a handful of people that have had to miss meetings because of work trips. And this would help them at least participate more often. Okay. Things like that. So. Right. so, Cam, Frank, do either of you want to weigh in on this? I mean, it's already obviously gone through both yeah. of you. So, I mean, is there anything else to add? Yeah, I mean, that echo exactly what Sarah said. Okay. Okay. Cameron Brunner, the chair of the PNC. So yeah, exactly that. Um, I think a big part of our discussion when we had this meeting was, you know, I really, as the chairman, appreciate as many voices as possible when we're hearing things at our meetings. So being able to have more people there, um, you know, uh, when they, they could make it. We have a couple that, you know, it may be it's a bad commute, could be a snowstorm. If they were at work, I guess, would that count? If they were at work, you couldn't get out of work in time? 
because the travel stuck at work. <laughs> it also, I mean, these are kind of vague requirements. So it also, uh, if anyone, if they give a reason and someone on the commission or on the board thinks that's not a sufficient reason, they can object to their remote okay. participation. But, um, you know, if someone can fall within these categories, like you said, you know, we're trying to encourage yes. participation if we can. Yeah, I mean, that was a big thing that we talked about at the meetings is, you know, we recognize our board is, um, our commission has people with a lot of different backgrounds, different opinions, and we like hearing all those different opinions when hearing, you know, petitions from our village. So more participation is better, and definitely it won't help with quorum, but just this one part is. is well, as that. chair, that discretion then is up to you, I guess. Uh, Greg, did you have anything? No, no I, I didn't know there were a couple meetings when I was out, out of town or uh, in Florida attending to the business I have there and once I had the, my business in Wyoming. And uh, um, I think one of the meetings didn't happen due to lack of quorum, but the other one happened and I, I would like to participate. But, okay. All right, good enough. Right. If it makes it easier to conduct business, then I'm all for it. So, good enough. Anything else? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Franco. Trustee Saviano? Yes. Trustee Kunze? Yes. Trustee Mahoney? Yes. Trustee Bridgen? Yes. Trustee Sauter? Yes. Okay, and that'll take us to our last item. My H, that's of course related. We could have a motion. Move to approve an ordinance <coughs> amending sections 30.20 of the Village of East Dundee Village Code regarding teleconferencing into meetings. Second. Franco. <coughs> Trustee. Saviano? Yes. Trustee Kunze? Yes. Trustee Mahoney? Yes. Trustee Britton? Yes. And Trustee Sauter? Yes. Okay, good enough. All right. Well, then it's going to take us to reports, and I have a quick Arbor Day proclamation I'm going to ask to read quickly into the, to the record. Um, proclamation for Arbor Day, April 26, 2024. Whereas in 1872, the Nebraska Board of Agriculture established a special day to be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than 1 million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can be a solution to combating climate change by reducing the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cutting heating and cooling costs, moderating and the temperature, cleaning the air, producing life-giving oxygen, and providing habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees in our village increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of the business areas and beautify our community, and whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, and whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal, now, I, now, therefore, I, Jeff Lynham, the village president of East Dundee, do hereby proclaim our, um, April 26, 2024 as Arbor Day in the village of East Dundee, and I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to pr protect our trees and woodlands. And further, I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. In witness thereof, I set my hand to this official notice and cause to be affixed to the seal of the Village of East Dundee this day, April 15th, 2024. And we've done our part with the eradication of the spongy mom. <laughs> so let's keep going. That's, and we are a tree community again. What was that? We are a tree USA community, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I know, I just stepped on your toes. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're all together. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay, so let's uh, get two reports. Andy, you want to start us off? Uh, sure. Uh, for the Arts Council, I um, just wanted to throw out there, we had uh, a meeting canceled last week. We had two people with leg legitimate reasons that couldn't make it, um, but since we're a uh, board of seven but have five people, it's kind of harder to meet the quorum. I think we've been holding out, hoping that uh, one of the volunteers who's put a lot of work in, Lindy, uh, could possibly be appointed, but I think we're at the point where we're thinking it might be more efficient and easier to meet quorum if we switch to five seats, uh, if we can't uh, quickly get two people who are uh, very committed to showing up. So uh, just kind of letting you know we're kind of leaning in that direction. We can talk about if you have some options to present or if we want to switch to five, but that's the only update I'll let you 
confirm or deny any of that. Confirm. <laughs> 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 I'll call it on that. Yeah. I'll touch base. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I think the, I mean, to totally interrupt, I think that's what we proposed for the depot council as well. Yes. Yeah, it was two it trustees and three. Right. So it might, those two councils <laughs> might work side by side. Yeah. Same. Uh, that's Good. all? No report. No report. Scott? Um, no report. Okay. I have no report. Kathleen? Um, just a couple of questions. Um, on the weekly or bi-weekly updates, um, I'm hoping that Chief, um, you know, within your incident reports that you put in in your bi-weekly, if you can add in um, establishments that failed the ID check, kind of, you know, wrap that into um, kind of an update. Um, Royals wasn't, um, or Lucy's wasn't a new um, gaming license. It was a transfer of a gaming license um, that we approved earlier this evening. <coughs> Got a phone call from a resident talking about the um, parking ban during snow season mm -hmm. up in the terrace. Mm -hmm. Felt that it wasn't really an issue with parking and snow plows up in the terrace and I kind of wanted to get some feedback from Phil on if he felt the same way. I know it's a big issue down so on some of the narrower neighbors. streets. Um, so that's one thing. Um, I don't know if anybody else talked to the person. Mm -hmm. What did the resident yep. okay. indicate to you that if they didn't see a need for it or a problem with it or what? I think it was, I don't like, I don't think they like the signs. They don't like the signs. Oh, it's uh, just, I, I just don't like the signs. Yeah. <laughs> they don't like the signs. Because they have to be in my yard. I got that one. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Nobody <laughs> wants to, everybody's fine with the whole parking thing. It's especially for emergency vehicles. Yeah. Just nobody wants the signs up. So yeah. I don't know what to do about that. Right. And I know we have, we have that on the agenda for May 6th. <laughs> mm -hmm. So i um, hoping that um, we can have a robust conversation on that. Um, and feedback from Phil, you know, on how things went, if there were challenges with plowing. Um, also on May 6th, I'm hoping that we can, we've made recommendations for the, the depot board, um, our depot council, and hoping to get that added to that. Um, so we've had, we've had those um, for a bit. Um, and that we can put that on, on that. The, um, we are less than a month away from the depot market starting. Right. And um, so, so summer's almost here. Cool. Mm -hmm. Sarah. So, yeah. On that note, Franco, did the letter go out that we discussed in the committee meeting? Uh, not yet, Bill is back at work Wednesday. So that will go out okay. Wednesday. It will go out Wednesday, yeah. excellent. Um, we, tweaked the letter to all of the um, vendors. Thank you. Marketers was not the right word. <laughs> <laughs> um, vendors for the market. So that's in good shape. Um, looking forward to that going out. And um, another thing for this, since she just had the whole magical May agenda out mm -hmm. with the parking garage, I'm probably going to ask questions about um, funding. What? Funding. <laughs> um, upkeep, up, like average estimates on upkeep, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. And I had another thing I can check in with you. I just want to kind of prepare for that conversation. Um, and yeah, just the depot count or the deep depot council um, getting that ready to go so that when the depot market season starts, we can start making a whole bunch of good changes down there too. Okay. Great. Right, we'll keep going. Caitlin? Do you have no report. No? Chris? No report. Okay. Joe? No report. Chief? No report. All right. Phil? Just a quick note on the Trees in USA uh, recognition for 2023. In addition to that, we applied for a, um, to the RRA Foundation uh, growth report, which essentially means that we went above and beyond the core standards for becoming or maintaining our tree city USA status. And so we were 
approved for that. Um, and for a small group of cities, less than 15% of the tree city, less than 50% of tree city, USA cities, have achieved the growth award status. So uh, I can provide a little more detail, but. I got a quick question concerning that. Um, that recognition comes on what, a state level or national or how? So the application is made to our state, uh, to the state level, and then forwarded on to the, to the National Arbor Day Foundation. Would, and I know this may sound a bit crass, but is there any funding that would be available for us to like, maintain our efforts with the spongy moth, for instance? So so that's specifically the trees. Yeah. For that process, not at this point. Oh, okay. no, just curious. Yeah. It would be nice. You know, it all, it's all going towards the same effort, but it's right, an right. expensive proposition, so we'll just take it. work on that. So that's good. provide some more detailed information about five weeks this weekend. And also, we're looking for the Arbor Day proclamation. Next week is Arbor Day, so we're looking to um, coordinate an Arbor Day tree planting ceremony. Um, at this point, we're working with Lakewood Elementary School. I don't know if you may or may not know, but part of the school falls within our corporate limits. So we're trying to span the two communities. So there's a parkway area adjacent to the school on the other side of that parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. Planting ceremony. So Good enough. Okay, and then certainly, last, last but not least, Erica, what do you got? Uh, this is really one of Phil's updates, but I'm really excited about it, and he didn't mention it, so I'll steal his thunder there. <laughs> <laughs> Signs went up today on Water Street prohibiting trucks. Uh, so Chief and I had a conversation today about how that enforcement will roll out. Um, but starting today, actually when the ordinance was passed a few weeks ago, it was actually on the books then, but until the signs went up, we didn't want to start enforcing, but mm -hmm. um, we should see a significantly reduced amount of traffic on that section of Water Street from 72 to Barrington. Um, and we'll try to educate drivers and figure out better ways to route traffic trucks out of that section. So very excited about that. That's cool. all. Great. Okay. Um, we step, and I believe we're going to go into an executive session. So, if we could have a motion to adjourn into uh, executive session. Um, C21 and C5. C21 and C5. I'll make a motion to close to the public and media under the provisions of the Illinois Open Meetings Act 5 ILCS. 120 slash 2, C21 discussion of minutes, and C5 acquisition of property. We will adjourn from that meeting and not come back into public session. Second. Great. Hi. Trustee Saviano? Yes. Trustee Kunze? Yes. Trustee Mahoney? Yes. Trustee Braden? Yes. Trustee Sauter? Yes. We're going to conclude our meeting. I appreciate everybody's time tonight. Oh, you don't have to go home. But you can't stay here. Thank you.